when you train LLMs on LLM outputs, they start to deteriorate. So this problem, it's coming. Models are gonna essentially start to collapse. AI from this huge steep growth will actually start going downward and we see a big threat to the internet. I'm uh, one of the founders and the CTO behind uh, Origin12, uh, the project that is building the decentralized knowledge graph for trusted AI. It's designed to build a foundation for a verifiable internet. As we will have the internet paradigm shift to interactions between human-computer interactions and computer-computer interactions being predominantly AI-driven, uh, we need to tackle the problems that AI poses. Now with the emerging AI, we cannot just rely on the data set that's used to be built. We cannot believe it, we want to check it. So if you have ever used ChatGPT or some sort of LLM type of system like that, uh, you've seen that it like, you know, can generally really well respond to some of your queries or requests, but uh, quite often actually it's very confidently going to go wrong. Uh, and the reason behind it is just that the way that this technology works and this technology is designed by default in a way to hallucinate. So what it tries to do is to guess the next word. Actually, AI is constantly hallucinating. It's trying always to give us a response that we want to see. But sometimes those hallucinations are correct, but there are also cases where it's not. And the trouble is we cannot differentiate when it's correct or not. Other problems that, that such technology brings um, is that that obviously introduces bias. So uh, there's been quite a lot of chatting about that recently on, on the web. Outside of bias, um, there's also issues with centralization, obviously. I guess I'm preaching to the choir here, but if we have only a few big companies in the world owning this extremely powerful technology, that's also going to be a very big problem. And, and that brings us to also this situation where data ownership and intellectual property rights are totally not respected. And finally, there's kind of a, another problem that happens here, which is uh, this thing called model collapse. So that means that as AI is able to generate data more power, and kind of we're more powerful with that, and it's cheaper, it's going to keep generating more and more of it. And um, after a certain certain point in time, and we believe that's very near in the future, we're going to see more content online generated by AI than all of the content ever produced by humans before. And what happens when you train LLMs on data that LLMs already output is actually they deteriorate. They start acting worse. They they give you wrong answers. Uh, they, they start being less precise, um, and, um, and this is just the beginning. So we might be seeing the power of the technology even go down because of this problem. And uh, we believe that all of these problems are a perfect match for Web3 technologies to tackle. If we are able to establish a foundation for AI, sort of a verifiable internet, this can actually tackle all of those problems. Essentially, um, Origin Trail is kind of like a um, connectivity component. Instead of a layer ones in, in the blockchain space, as kind of a chain of its own and then kind of everything is happening there, Origin Trail is a bit different. It's actually a multi-chain decentralized knowledge graph. If you can consider it as kind of a very powerful search engine slash database that's AI powered. So um, knowledge graphs are actually a branch of AI called symbolic AI. LLMs are a branch of AI called neural AI. This is the new uh, the new domain that's now, now exploding. And at this intersection of these two, there's like incredible power. And there's a lot of research showing that this is going to be the next wave of uh, where AI is going, is going to go. So imagine AI actually not inventing answers for you, but actually getting answers based from this verifiable sources on the internet, meaning that it's able to access knowledge assets from different parties in a decentralized way, organizations, individuals, institutions, um, maintaining data ownership and intellectual property at that because we could own our data, um, but also getting verifiability. So essentially being able to know exactly who the source or what the source was for a certain knowledge asset um, and actually using that as input for AI. So we at Air Origin Trail have proposed a very broad framework for this verifiable internet called the DRAG framework or Decentralized Retrieval Augmented Generation framework. Retrieval Augmented Generation is a very good way to use LLMs. A decentralized approach to that makes uh, a lot of sense. With, with Origin12, we're actually providing um, uh, some components for this particular idea. 
uh, but obviously not all of the components. There's a lot of uh, room for other Web3 technologies and, and non-Web3 technologies to be included and to essentially support this, this bigger vision of the verifiable internet. Currently, Origin 12 is a multi-chain uh, graph. It's deployed on Polkadot with its custom, basically, pair chain called NeuroWeb. And uh, also on Ethereum, on, on um, uh, Gnosis in particular, and, and other chains. Um, and a big part of Origin 12 is also this NeuroWeb chain on Polkadot, which uh, its intention is to namely incentivize creation of trusted knowledge through something called Paranets. So think of it like this, think of, um, Web2 companies actually amassing a ton of data, and all of them, by the way, use knowledge graphs. So uh, think of Netflix, Google, Uber, uh, IKEA, you know, the, the, the industry also as well. They use knowledge graphs to make sense of their data and actually extract a ton of value out of it. But they all do it in a centralized way and closed in. So Origin, what Origin Trail tries to do is take this paradigm and bring it to Web3, completely open and permissionless, so that anybody can basically uh, extract value from their own data and knowledge. But to do this, the, pr the premise has to be that you can uh, retain ownership of your data. So um, having that said, um, as somebody who would like to build on Origin Trail, you can actually pick the blockchain you want. You can pick the services you want to use. You can create something called a Paranet, and then you can ask the community to give you incentives through Paranets. So pretty much just like in Polkadot, you can ask uh, for uh, treasury funding from the basically the community. You can do the same with NeuroWeb. NeuroWeb treasury, it, it has one regular community treasury and it also has knowledge mining incentivization pool. So like a big part of the NeuroWeb tokens are allocated into incentivizing the knowledge mining. By applying for a knowledge mining incentivize, you will get some Neuro token funds which will cover off the fees you used for creating knowledge and putting it in a decentralized knowledge graph. The idea is that one can build something very easily based on existing Web3 technologies uh, that a consumer without any knowledge of Web3 can actually consume, meaning they can interact through trusted AI with some knowledge and they don't have to necessarily know what a wallet is or need to necessarily use a token. What they can do though is they can trust the interaction and trust the information that they see and see all, all of the sources. Well, NeuroWeb benefited a lot being part of the Polkadot ecosystem because all the openness and support that we got from the tech people, but also from the community, but also the modularity and extensibility from, of the framework. There will be some future researches on the terms like graph contracts that we want to build on top of it. And that's what I don't think any other chain can provide us so easily. Building a custom set of on-chain uh, capabilities, such as this incentivization capability, was very um, applicable to the Substrate framework. Substrate gives you quite a lot of power to do this on your own and actually go deeper, uh, rather than just working uh, sort of on, let's say, smart contract level in the Ethereum environment. And uh, it, it provided a lot of flexibility, including uh, the ability to obviously harness the con the, the, all of the interconnectivity with the rest of the ecosystem. Obviously, Polkadot offering shared security as a model was something that, that was quite interesting for us. And um, having that said, yeah, for over the more than two years now, the, the pair chain has been running very smoothly, actually, no, no downtime so far. And uh, it's got its own governance, uh, and all of the pallets that were uh, available were, were a big plus. Polkadot seems to be to get this right. And, um, and from the get-go, this uh, idea of having multiple different projects have freedom to build different things in different ways, yet have a common environment to share this value is absolutely something that, that uh, will attracted us to, to Polkadot. One um, initiative that's actually happening right now is something called Polkabot. Polkabot is <clears throat> essentially one of those projects, it's a parent, is designed for the Polkadot community, and is going to be essentially an education platform based on Polkadot, relevant ecosystem knowledge. So it's kind of like a chatbot, uh, but not exactly. So if you go there and you chat with it, you can ask questions to it, but it's not that an LLM will respond to you like uh, ChatGPT or something and actually hallucinate something. Rather, what it's going to do is going to do this decentralized retrieval augmented generation or DRAG. It's going to go 
find the knowledge assets re relevant to your question, and then present you the answer uh, from that knowledge, including who the source of that knowledge was. So the, the point of Origin Trail is to synergize knowledge from all different places. So you can create knowledge assets from anything, like documents like PDFs or uh, scientific research. There's actually a very interesting uh, project around scientific research. Uh, one of the, the builders within the Origin Trail community built something called the DKG Copilot, which is essentially using ChatGPT as an interface. So place where pretty much everybody hangs out a little bit during the day. You, you ask it for something to help you with. Um, but actually it queries the DKG under the hood and accesses these knowledge assets made from scientific papers. And what's really cool about scientific papers is they refer to each other, right? They have these links inherently inside the, the references. So uh, it helps using the graph to, to find relevant knowledge among multiple play papers at once. So if, if today you go to ChatGPT and install the DKG Copilot GPT, you can query all the knowledge assets that are sitting on Origin Trail DKG and are supported by NeuroLab on Polkadot. And the knowledge is going to be non-Polkadot non knowledge. It's uh, general scientific knowledge. And very interesting actually from uh, the perspective of decentralized science because there's, there's actually been a lot of interest to apply this in the DSI space, but not just DSI space, there's other uh, relevant communities, the, for example, the Industry 4.0 community is already populating the graph uh, quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of uh, interest from even sport communities. Um, generally, everybody is operating on some body of knowledge and it's, it's, it's always useful to lower the friction to basically accessing and using, uh, not just consuming, but actually using this knowledge. In, in the real world, and that's that's uh, that's where we need to keep building. What we need to do as a community is we need to start going out of the building a little bit more. What we have been consumed over the past many years is, you know, how do we build the internals of all of this technology and how to increase scale, all of valid problems. But I think the inertia took us in a direction where we're too much consumed with our own problems instead of consumer problems. So one big thing is just go out and, and out of the building and build products. And, and I think once we offer this value, and there's a lot of value in Web3, but in a little nicer way to everybody else and, and really try, um, I think that that would be a good good uh, approach to go with. Uh, and when you think about like, even though we, we love the, the notion of internet being decentralized and having all of these different websites, people end up hanging around, um, I don't know, handful of services. They're, in Telegram, they're on Twitter or X, um, on social media, like basically most of the Discord people people are there. So uh, one of the things we are doing with the, at the Origin Trail is actually going there, making those interfaces the interface to access uh, Web3. You don't even have to see under the hood like what exactly the technological complexity is all about, rather you get an answer as a regular user. For example, if you take Polkabot, you can go to Twitter and you can tweet at it a question. You can say slash ask, for example, what is Polkadot or why is the dot token being used or what is Origin Trail or what does Moonbeam do? And it will respond to you in a tweet. So if you're asking a complex question that the knowledge is not still in there, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be a confident uh, guesser. It's just gonna say, I don't know. And that means that that's an opportunity for somebody from the Polkadot community to provide an answer for that, to do knowledge mining essentially and even get rewards on Neuro. And same goes for, for Telegram and Discord, where we basically are going to expand this, uh, because we really need we we really need to go out where the where the people are are at. Well, it's quite amazing being part of this community, and in a way quite inspiring because decentralization in the first place is something that's driven the Polkadot community, but also the Origin Trail community. We have like the same vision how the tax should be approached and how the community should be involved. Like everyone should have a vote and is it for the governance of the poll code or is it for the knowledge mining in the future of the decentralized knowledge graph? Everyone should be involved in it because if you want to do something, we need to do it together. The big reason why we're in Web3 is because the, the ethos uh, really is what we believe in. And um, Origin Trail is a kind of a unique project here because it, it combines two visions. One is the vision of Web3 as we know today, enabling uh, ownership, but also permissionless uh, nature, decentralization, 
uh, together with um, the notion of a web of knowledge, which was uh, initially coined by Tim Berners-Lee, the founder of the World Wide Web, uh, who actually coined the original Web 3.0 term, which was called the semantic web. And today lives in the concept of knowledge graphs. So th for me personally, that's one of the most exciting things because it enables us to build something that's uh, not just for the good of all, but also it enables you to e effectively connect um, various different things together. At its core, it provides this uh, synergistic effect and lets the network effect actually roll out. Like, if you look at Bitcoin, for example, if you read the Bitcoin white paper, it's a, essentially blockchain as the invention. There was a synergy of a couple of different technologies, hashing, uh, public key infrastructure, um, consensus in a, a new type of way uh, with this Byzantine fault tolerance uh, um, um, solution. So uh, it's, it's a synergy that literally has born a whole new industry uh, and looking at those particular synergies is where, where we'll find well solutions to the problems we have today so it talks about this convergence of web3 crypto internet and ai how we can reach this together one of the key leading figures in the world of AI said that essentially, if you want to build proper AI, you will have to crowdsource all of the knowledge uh, to create a repository or all human knowledge. Um, and all humans will need to contribute to it. 